All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's trading door session. Good. Right. So, um, just to quick check everything. Okay, we'll get started. Cool. All right. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. Um, so today is the 11th of February. Okay. And a uh, quick update here for uh, so far this week. Hey, okay. um, we only have two trade outcome. This was actually like at the very start of the week. Okay. We do have two trade outcomes. Uh, this was the trade that we talked about yesterday. Uh, we didn't get involved in. Okay. Just to quickly show you where the current price is. Uh, New Zealand. All right. So this is this. Okay. Uh, you can see that price just basically come down a little bit. Okay. We were looking to enter like way higher. So uh, again, as usual, because it's an intraday trade, uh, every day when we come in, if the trade is not triggered, we'll just basically cancel that order. All right. So uh, nothing going to happen on this. Uh, and let's take a quick look at today's potential. Okay. Now, first off here is on Euro dollar. You still remember yesterday we talked about how um, potentially there is a, a move that is going to be like a correction, okay, coming down lower. Um, and what you see over here, of course, is you can see there is in fact a divergence happening, right? Price make a higher high, but your RSI actually makes a lower low, which suggests that there's a lack of momentum. There's a high potential that or high possibility that price was going to reverse. To the downside okay and uh, over here there is an opportunity that we can keep an eye on around the 618 okay we are looking to actually trade uh to the upside right simply because on the one hour time frame you can see we have a higher high higher low we are technically in an uptrend in the one hour time frame so we are looking for a trend following strategy uh, the one thing I don't really like about this so far right now is that uh, we do not really have a very clear confluence okay other than this Fibonacci of 618 and of course uh, some minor structure of support resistance in the past there really isn't anything else okay there's no Camarilla for today because you can see the L5 actually is at the 50% fit okay so I'm not too uh, how put it I'm not too in favor or I would say convicted to this particular trade uh, but I feel that at the same time, it's worth to be looking out for at, at this as well. Okay, um, there's a possibility this can still keep going higher. Uh, one more push. Okay, so uh, you know I, I wouldn't be rushing into it and put an order right now. Okay, I feel that because of that, um, my conviction level is not that high. I wouldn't want to place that order. Okay, for those of you who are keen to keep an eye on this then what you can really do is to have your entry around the 618, which is around 1.2070, okay, 1.2070. Uh, your stops can, of course, be placed if you're aggressive just below the 786, okay, that will put you around 1.2045, okay, so that's about uh, 25 pips of stops, right, pretty decent for an intraday. Uh, your target here, of course, you can pl place it at the previous high or you just use the H4, which is just slightly below it, um, that's around 1.2135, okay? So you can consider this. Um, obviously, you look at the risk-to-reward ratio, it's definitely worth it, okay? It's just that for me, uh, it's not something of a high conviction trade, right? Because we do not have much confluence, okay? So uh, usually, I want to look out for more information and not just like based on one 61.8 Fibonacci, then I'll take the trade, right? Usually, I don't do that. Okay, uh, the other one here is on pound dollar, right? So uh, you do see that we have broke above this previous high, okay, which is pretty significant, right? Uh, and on the intraday perspective, it's definitely in an uptrend right now. You have a higher high, higher low, right? And uh, if I were to pull in that fit over here, okay, you do see some minor confluence coming in around this zone. Okay, I would say around that 618 um, stack up with your previous resistance level, which was broken. Um, that was pretty, pretty solid. Okay, and uh, of course, you have that L5, which is very close. Okay, so that's about 15 pips uh, room. Okay, uh, this is a much, I would say, in terms of like confidence, conviction. This pair here has a much higher conviction than the euro dollar. Okay, 
So I will personally uh, keep an eye on this. Okay, I'll put in the author around the 61.8 Fibonacci. Okay, the stops are going to place it just at the 786, right? That brings in about 30 plus pips. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, the target here, I'm, I'm going to just be a little bit conservative. Okay, uh, I will be more happy to exit if price comes back towards like 3810. Okay, so that gives me like about 60 pips, which is one is to two. Okay. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll keep an eye on how market move. I think if it's going to be very strong in our favor to the upside, you can even use the H3 and H4, right? Which is the previous high over here right now. Okay, but uh, for now, I'll be a little bit more conservative. I'll just target somewhere around the 3810. Uh, that's where the L3 Camarilla is for the day. Okay, so um, let me do this screenshot. Okay, so today is the 11th Feb. Okay, and uh, I'll put this in. Okay, pound dollar, this is bullish. So we will have buy limit at um, 3750. The stops is around 3720. So 30 pip stops and um, target here, we're going to place it at uh, 3, 1, 12. 3, 8, 12, right? No, 3, 1, 12. Uh, let me find that. Right. Okay, so let me place that order in as well. Good, right? So um, this is the new order for the day. Okay, let's move on to the next pair, Aussie dollar. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you recall, I think I did mention about this as well. There's a divergence on it. Okay, we suggest that there's a be short-term retracement. Uh, we are currently seeing that, right? We are experiencing that. Okay, but overall, you can see we are in an uptrend, right? On the H1 time frame, higher, 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 low. Price is just going higher. Okay, uh, so right now over here, you can deploy a trend following strategy. Again, um, this is pretty much similar to Euro dollar. Okay, uh, I'm not very high in conviction for this trade again there's not much of a confluence happening around all this region okay so i would suggest that um perhaps it's good to be a little bit more patient okay um there's really not much uh confluence going on okay so for the aussie dollar and the euro dollar i would say that uh you can keep an eye on it okay uh but at the same time i wouldn't be jumping into any of this trade okay uh, one way to look at it is, of course, if you're very super aggressive kind, okay, uh, maybe on a 30-minute, 50-minute time frame trade up, okay, because of the divergence, you obviously can trade to the downside, right? Maybe a breakout of the L3 and then your target is at the L5, okay, uh, for a short trade, okay, that gives you about maybe 28, 30 pips. Um, you can potentially look at that, okay? Uh, again, I... I don't just base a trading decision uh, simply because there is one thing happening, right? So I don't trade all divergence if you just, if you actually realize that, okay? And I think you shouldn't be doing that as well because if you spot any divergence and you just keep taking every divergence that you see on the chart, um, it's not going to be very effective, okay? Let, let's put it that way, right? Because um, you'll probably be losing half of the time, reading half of the time, and then, um, your win rate might not be very high and uh, it might affect your psychology, your confidence, etc. Okay. So I wouldn't suggest that you take every divergence that you see. Okay. You want to stack up your odds. Okay. Which means you need more than just a divergence to execute that trade. Okay. So right now, um, this one here, and of course the Euro dollar, I wouldn't be, you know, looking to take that trade. Of course, if you take a look at Euro dollar here, uh, you do have the divergence that you can even also consider like the breakout to the downside and then you, your target here is perhaps the L5 Camarilla. Okay, that gives you, I think, about 30 pips as well. But uh, again, these are trades that is valid, 
but it's not high probability, right? So I wouldn't be personally looking to take them, okay? Uh, next up here, we do have the Kiwi dollar, okay? It's basically still in the range, right? You do see that this high here, right? It, it broke it a little bit, but it almost come back down instantly. So we can, we can confidently say that this is basically in a range bound environment, okay? It's just going sideways. And most of the time when you are going sideways, the strategy that we're gonna use is a harmonic pattern strategy. Okay, um, and of course you also want to reference to like maybe one higher time frame to see, right? It's basically just range. Okay. Um, if you ask me, I I don't think there's any high quality setup. Okay, um, there are valid patterns. Okay, let me do a very quick chat. Yeah, this is valid. Okay, that's a valid cipher pattern, right? If you're keen. Um, somewhere around 786, that's where it completes, right? So this is a cipher pattern. Okay, not too bad, I would say. Um, there is some minor confluence around the L5, okay, which is less than 10 pips, so it's pretty tight arranged, it's fine. Okay, so there's some minor confluence around this area, around 0 0.7160. Okay, that's where your that's where your cipher pattern completes. Okay. Uh, and of course, if you would like to trade the cipher pattern, your stops has to go up, has to go below this level here, previous low. Okay, and that's gonna be at 7135. Uh that's about 25 pips of stops. Okay, pretty decent for intraday. Okay. Uh, your target, because it's a range-bound environment, you wouldn't want to be too ambitious, okay? So maybe an L3 target will be good. Uh, that puts you at 0 0.72, okay? So that's uh, about 40 pip, right? So your risk-reward is not too bad, right? Pretty decent, okay? The only thing that perhaps you want to be aware of is that there's no clear sense of direction, okay? Which means that obviously price can break off this entry level and just keep going down. Okay, because there's no clear direction that you can look at right now. It's just range. Okay, um, I'm not someone who likes to take this kind of odds. Okay, where you know it's not clear and things like that. But it's a valid one. Okay, so I want you to see that uh, there's a difference between uh, a valid trade and there's a difference between a high probability trade. Right. So these are more like high. Uh, these are valid trade, but it's not high probability. Okay, which means that uh, maybe, you know, for some of you who are starting off uh, new in trading, okay, you want to look at them, okay, uh, and you might be taking all valid trades that you see, right, because that's the human psyche, right, when you are new, when you're just into the market, you are excited, you want activity, you tend to look out for events that you can participate in, uh, and you jump onto any opportunities that you can find on the chart. Okay, that's very common. Okay, but as you progress in your journey, eventually you realize that hey, you don't need to take all trades. Okay, all you need is good, solid, quality trades, and you're done for the week, or, or you're even done for the day. Or some of you, if you're longer term, you're done for the month, right? So, um, I want you to to be able to see beyond uh the stage where you are. Okay, because maybe if you're brand new, you'll probably be very excited to just jump into trades every time you see one. Okay. So again, um, this is valid, but I would not be taking it myself. Okay. Uh, another perspective I would like to add on to this uh, episode over here, of course, is that if you are trading a small account, right, your psychology will be very different from if you're trading a large account. Okay. Now, this account that I'm doing here on public is relatively small. Okay. It's, it's just about 500 US dollar when we started off. Okay. It's, it's not something very big. It's not something small. Okay. Depending, of course, you know, some of you relative, right? Money is relative. Uh, but I want you to take in terms of scale, okay? So if today, if let's say this is a relatively small account, right? I can just enter trades. I don't really care about it because if it loses, it's not a huge amount anyway, okay? Uh, but at the same time, you want to be thinking of scalability, which, which means that if, yes, this is a $500 account, you're going to act as if it's small. But what happens if you progress into your other stages of trading, right? Let's say this is no longer a five, $500 account. It's a $500,000 account. Would you have done the same thing? Probably not, right? You'd be a lot more cautious. You, 
you'll be a lot more conscious in terms of the decision that you make. Okay, so I want you to train that perspective uh, of yours. Okay, while I'm sharing over here, right? Train that perspective of yours in terms of scalability and not just think that, oh, it's a small account, right? Don't mind. Anyhow, just take it, right? So don't have that perception because uh, if you kind of like, it's a muscle memory, right? If you feed that side of yours, then as you progress, it becomes a very, very challenging for you to adopt um, back to the right mentality and mindset, right? So I hope that helps. Okay, um, next up here, we have the dollar cat. Uh, again, we do see divergence happening on a chart, right? Because they are all major pairs, okay? Um, again, the dollar related, more most of them are in tandem, right? They're moving in tandem. So again, this is a valid breakout to the upside, but I won't be taking it, okay? Uh, it's a valid, not a high probability trade, okay? Um, on the one hour, it's moving down, but this trend down is not very strong. So again, I would suggest that uh, we'll just leave it aside right now. Okay, not very clear setup. Okay, dollar yen, basically, since yesterday we talked about it, it's just sideways, nothing has developed. Okay, and uh, it's a very, very tight range, right? If you take a look at this, this is like basically a 40 bit range since yesterday when we talked about it. Um, today, okay, um, there's a potential setup here, which we often trade as well. We call the divergence. Uh, and then a break of the neckline and we wait for the correction back to 618, right? Uh, but looking at where it is right now, that's about 70 pips. Unlikely that's going to happen in a day. Okay, that's beyond the average daily range of uh, dollar yen. So um, I'm not going to put in that trade for today. Okay, but I just wanted to share with you this is a valid setup. Okay, maybe if tomorrow this continue correct here, um, we'll, we'll look at it, okay? Uh, but of course, right now, um, I wouldn't be putting that in. Okay, um, gold, basically, since we talked about it yesterday, is also sideways. Okay, you can see over here. Um, gold is building up a clear divergence as well. Okay, again, you wouldn't want to trade all divergence, right? Again, you know, if you trade all of them, you realize that every pair, you can actually spawn it. Okay, so um, again, divergence just simply suggests there's a, there's a lack of momentum. There's a high possibility this is going to reverse or retrace. Okay, which means this can come back down lower first. Um, if I give you some guidance, maybe towards the L5, okay, and the 786 region, somewhere around here, okay, um, that might that might see some support coming in, and then from there, maybe gold can continue to rally to the upside. Okay, so I always say that I'm not a fan of short-term trading of uh, the precious metal commodities. I'm more of like looking for long-term whenever I touch them uh, from an investing perspective, right? Because it's very volatile in the short term, okay? And I, as I mentioned before, I don't monitor on the market every time, okay? Usually, even on the intraday strategy on this account here, uh, I come in morning, okay? Spend this trading those time with you guys. And then after that, I place my order and then that's it, <laughs> okay? Um, I leave it until tomorrow, okay? Uh, maybe in the evening, I'll just do minor check, move my stops if there is, and then that's it, okay? So, that's my style, okay? That's why I, I say I'm not fitted for intraday, but we're doing this so that uh, I want to still pass on that skill set to any one of you who are keen to look at it, right? Uh, so I know this because in the past where I got started in trading, I, I literally go into intraday, right? Like look at 15 minute, 30 minute charts and then I spend a lot of time in front of it, okay? I know what it takes to become an intraday trader and I know that I'm not that person. Okay, I don't like sitting in front of a computer just to watch the chart. Okay, some of you that do, maybe I don't know. Okay, um, yeah, but you need to know that again, right? You need to know your personality, uh, and how that gels into your trading strategy. Okay, again, a lot of mini lessons over here if you pay attention to it. Okay, uh, so here same thing. Okay, I think that gold has a possibility to keep falling. Maybe uh, it can drop towards the L five today. Uh, so again. I wouldn't be placing any order here, uh, but just to share with you in terms of my view, what can price likely do today, right? From an intraday perspective. All right, um, yeah. So that's basically about it for today's session, right? Uh, very straightforward, okay? Uh, if you go back to, I think the only trade that we have today will be the pound dollar, okay? which is here, right? So again, uh, you can take a look at this. This is about 80 bits. Uh, I don't think today 
the market is going to move 80 pips, okay? But because this is, to me, this is considered a high conviction trade, okay? Of course, it doesn't mean 100%, right? High, high conviction just means that I'm confident in it, that's all, okay? Uh, so I'm just going to place it there. I don't think we're going to hit it today anyway because uh, the daily range of pound dollar, yes, is a bit more volatile, uh, but 80 pips is more like at the verge of the maximum daily range, okay? So... Uh, actually, in fact, right, um, just to point this out to you, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, okay? If you're not familiar with all these pairs and their characteristic and nature of it, right, uh, based on the indicators that you guys have downloaded, okay, uh, if not, you just head over to the website, thetradingdo.com can download those indicators that I use exactly the same here, okay? Uh, at the top left, you actually can see, right, previous range is about 63, okay? At the top left, I think on the, on the screen right now that you see on Facebook Live, it's a bit small, uh, but you lock into your MT4, you'll be able to see that on the top left, right? It prints their previous range 63, which means yesterday, okay, the move of pound dollar is about 63, okay? So it's more or less that, right? You'll be able to have a good gauge as to what is the average daily range of all this pair, okay? It's, a, it's important for you to know this information if you're trading intraday because that builds the expectation for you as a trader, okay? Uh, yeah, so for today, uh, honestly, there's not much. Or I would say entire week this week, right, other than the trade that we took on Monday, uh, really nothing much that is happening this week, right? A lot of consolidation after a strong impulse push to the upside. That's common. Okay, that's usually what happens, right? The market push off, um, it takes off, and then it needs some time to take a reset, a break, right? And that's what we call consolidation, correction. Uh, after that, it takes off again, okay? So uh, you need to be aware of that, especially if you are intraday, right? If this week here is a consolidation week, then basically what you find is that from Tuesday to Thursday, basically the market is not moving. You won't get a lot of trades, but that doesn't mean you don't put in the effort, right? Because what happens is you still need to prepare yourself and then when next week comes, that's where all the opportunity starts to kick in, Okay. So I um, hope you're aware of that as well. Okay, so that's all for me today. Um, I think today, uh, those of you who are celebrating Chinese New Year is, is uh, the eve of the holiday, right? Uh, and um, that's where uh, I'm not sure where you guys are based on. If you're in Malaysia, you're probably still in the lockdown. Okay, you're still limited by 10 kilometers. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, but anyway, um, just wishing you guys all um, happy holidays. And... Okay, um, we'll come back again next week on Tuesday, right? And um, let's see how the market is probably going to develop for the remaining of today and uh, the remaining of the week, which is tomorrow. Right, so uh, have a great weekend ahead. Um, and of course, great holidays to all of you as well. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday, right? Bye-bye.